Hello everybody, welcome back to Wappleville. Got another live session for you. This is something, I haven't done too many Dark Sword figures on the live streams, so I thought I'd do another one of these. I think we did some, oh, some basically Game of Thrones type figures from Dark Sword, but this one, just an individual one here. And before I get the chat set up, this is the new thing here. Green Stuff World, their new acrylic paints. I think there are 50. Now there's other, there's the candy inks, the metallics, everything else, but this is the first time I've used these ever at all. So we're going to give those things a shot. Now like I said, we're going to try and get the chat thing set up here. So let me, that means typing in passwords, and I think you see the, the gray box of death over here. that We're trying to move into the spot where the gray box of death goes. All right, let's see if we can't. There we go. Now let's make this accessed. Yeah, yeah, we have to authorize. So just pardon me while I type in some stuff here. I think you can hear the tap, tap, tap of the keyboard. There's one more thing to do here yet. One more here. Do, do, do. And hopefully we are good to go. All right, so let's make our opacity what we want it to be. And let's, oh, let's make the letters a little bit bigger here. Now, I'm going to get my window over here just in case. And let's go for it here. Now, like I said, as we get this puppy out of the way here. Dark Sword figure. Uh, you got a little scroll here, so maybe we'll try to do some freehand on that. Going to try to do some non-metallic metals on this. Maybe some translucent cloth. But what I want to do is get to some of these guys here. So we're going to try and use some of the brighter, more intense colors just to see what happens. And in a typical color scheme, something like, say, a, the purple opposed with some of the nifty little jade right here. Hey, Trevor. Now I've got two windows open here, so I'm going to zonk one of these real quick. Bingo. Now we just got one. It's been an interesting day, actually. Uh, <laughs> all about Lord of the Rings in more ways than one, because I actually did get to play another game today, and as I was cleaning up an additional studio area, I found a whole bunch of additional ring race, which means we're going to be doing lessons on painting black. Here's some other Dark Sword figures that I've done. This was a... Actually, both of these are Patreon videos right here. So that is actually a pledge level right there, and Trevor knows all about that. And actually, probably Bethany and a lot of the folks that are going to show up here have seen this. See with the little butterflies there on the plants from Wicked Elf, and actually some of the paper, uh, the vellum foliage from Wicked Elf. So lots of fun stuff there. Speaking of foliage and green stuff, we're, we're going to try and use some of this. This is a tall foliage. Really love this. Now I've been really thinking about what we want to do with these. Oh, and here's another thing too. Okay, so you can hear, hear that and there's an agitator in there. That's, that's cool. That's good. But you're going to want to have something like this and you're going to want to poke a hole here. All the, the other Green Stuff World paints, I don't remember them having that particular feature there where you've got to actually poke the hole in there to get this thing started. But you can squeeze and squeeze on this thing. Nothing's going to come out until this thing pops off and you end up with paint all over you like I did it. It wasn't me that was doing it, but uh, somebody not quite familiar with this uh, scale 75 paints. But these are Green Stuff World. I'm just going to throw some of these out. I, I had to pick some. I didn't want to pick 50. I, I just tried to pick a few here that I thought could do some interesting things. So... Yeah, so I'm going to have to give it another another shot here. Let's see what happens here. There we go. Now some of that comes out. Now we've got these couple of different turquoises and blues right here. We'll give this a shot. There we 
we go. I don't know how much coverage these have, like the the prolicurals. We know that those things cover like crazy. And we know what the Reaper Clears do in the liners, because, well, we've used them plenty of times. These, not so much. So this is going to be a little bit of exploration right here. Hey, Paul, how's it going? Yeah, this will be... Oh, that's that's actually more green than I thought it was going to be. It was like a Kraken green. There you go. Uh, actually, it's a lot like... Mm -hmm, a little bit like this, actually, the clear Thalo green. Like I said, we're going to find out how clear it actually is. And I wanted to see what this was. This abyss blue. It's a wonder in. And again, that's the agitator that you're bouncing around back and forth in there. I'll throw this over here. So it's sort of a deep, rich, bluish purple. And I wanted to see what this was going to be. This blue-gray dusk. Again, agitator. You can hear that bopping around in there. Let's throw this over here. Uh-huh. So... That one's kind of nice. It's mm, now it's a little dark for Space Wolves Gray. Now let's get into some of these. This will be my de facto Maiden Flesh right here. Uh, oh geez, that's holy really smokes! It's Thursday now, and especially for you, it's probably more of Thursday than it is here. <laughs> here we're only uh, two and a half hours into Thursday, but. Yeah, let's keep going. Now this is eh, about this is another kind of a maiden flesh type color right here. But Lord of the Rings, yeah, that was that was kind of fun. I got to use the Easterlings again, and it's it's a whole day of firsts because I had never used any of the ring rates at all in any of our games, and this one I had Kamul the Easterling, and he. Basically, he didn't do a whole bunch with the with the spells. There was one key moment with Instill Fear that was helpful in me running away with the Palantir. Oh, hey James, how is it going? Wow, it actually, I wonder if that's a new thing. It actually says uh, what time, so it's two twenty nine. Interesting. Okay, well that's good to know. What one is this? This is Blushing Flesh. I've seen this same color. In other lines, it's named a million different things. I can't even remember most of them. All right, and then this, since there's no really dark browns, all I'm going to have to do is take this black here, and we'll mix it with some of our other colors on the base, that sort of thing. All right, so I'm going to set those aside. I'll grab our usual craft brush right here. We'll get this glove on so that you don't have to see... The light's bouncing off of the skin there. Let's, we're going to make this a little bigger since it does seem that our chat is working. Alrighty. Really simple base here. Went with a simple base because, again, I want to try some of the, the foliage on there. Who knows? Time permitting, maybe we go in with some of our oh, uh, butterflies some kind of paper foliage. Speaking of black, so we got a obviously a black writer here, ring wraith. This will probably be a, another live session or so on how to paint with blacks. Maybe we'll use the Green Stuff World paints for that. Or maybe we'll use oils. Who knows? What we are going to do though, and we're just using water. We're keeping it simple. There's no contrast paints out here. Simple as can be. We're going with some black here. Oh, let's try some. Of, I want to see what this so it is. Ah, it's almost like. Gosh, how did I almost forget it? The the blue that I used to use. It was a Reaper color. Uh, it was wasn't abyss blue. That's this. I'll I'll remember it at some point. But here, gonna mix these together. That should make us a nice little bit of a gray. And we're just going to work that into here. Why did I want to do this? Why am I not using the usual clear and liners? Well, we want to see, does, can this be used like the clear and liners? What happens when you thin it with water? Does it break down? Because we know 
that the clear paints, uh, it's 4.30 in the afternoon. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Let's see if we can't change that a bit. We're going to take some of this green here. It's going to make a little different sort of gray. And then maybe some just the straight up skin tone. Now there are there is this. Oh, what is this right here? So there's this redwood brown. And for the heck of it, I'm going to throw this out here. And you're also going to see where I have to poke the old hole in the top of this here. As soon as I saw this, I said, hmm, I think I better not squeeze this. I think I better grab one of these guys. T-shaped pin always makes it easier. And we'll just out. The camera's going to shake because it takes a little bit of force to do that. So see, we've got the pin down in there like so. Let's throw some of this out here. And we'll put this back. Now, like I said, there's, what, 50 of these? I may grab some more as we go along just to give them a try. But that's nice. Okay. They seem to be uh, relatively... Oh, what what's even a word that I can use to describe? They, they seem kind of... I think they're holding their own here. When they're thinned down with water, don't really see these breaking down or anything like that. So that's that's a plus. That's always good. Now we'll see what kind of opacity we get here. This is just a the black, so I can see they're not quite as opaque as say the creature caster slash monument. Probably more like, oh, I think even the Reaper Dragon Black is maybe a little more opaque than that. And I know it's weird to be referring to black as opaque or not opaque. All right, so you see we've we got some green there, some uh, red over there. Keeping it simple. And I did add something new graphically. I've got the, my Instagram, I mean, just Wapelius. Instagram, type in that Wapelius, and you'll see stuff. And that'll be finished stuff. So I can see right away that this stuff on a wet palette can get thinned down pretty quick. So we're just doing our usual little quick pre-glaze here. And in case you haven't really seen too much in the way of Dark Sword miniatures, poof, here's the Dark Sword website. All kinds of fun stuff. Now, this is a uh, somewhat recent. This is probably about episode 23. I think I'm on episode 28 now. So, yeah, another Dark Sword figure. This is one from the, I almost said Song of Ice and Fire, but Game of Thrones, you get it. Oh, look at all those Reaper paints there. So... You can see we tried it. This was also an experiment with a little different snow technique than I normally use. We made icicles, right? But that's a little quick trip down Dark Sword Lane. Now let's do some other things that involve another color. I just want to try these all out here, see what happens. We want to see, are they matte? Are they gloss? Do they have a little sheen? Are they satin? You you know as much as I do, maybe more, because I, I haven't used these yet. So here we're taking the, oh gosh, what is that? The Not the pale flesh, it's the peach something or other. It's got a little yellow in it. Well, let's hit, let's get this little, whatever this is, this piece of parchment here. Not quite sure what sort of freehand I want on there. Uh... Don't know if it spells. I mean, it could be some kind of a. Nah, we'll see what it's going to be. Hair color, what do we want to do? I don't know. Let's just see what this is going to do. So, right away, first thing I notice is that these are not super opaque, at least not in the way that the Pro Acryls are. So, they're definitely more transparent. I'm seeing that right away because I'm not 
thinning this with water. Granted, there it's a wet palette, so there's water. Hey, Tyler, how's it going? Yeah, sorry, it's been a while since the last one, but I've been filming videos for the Patreon page like crazy, and those just take up so much more time. So, just as an example. If this thing is three hours long, imagine, okay, filming something that's three hours long, and then you got to transfer the files, you have to edit, render, all this kind of stuff as we take one of those skin colors. Here, let's lighten it up just a tad. So now you're about six hours in. Well, then you've got to upload those things, and that can take a while. Now, uh, sometimes three hours, sometimes more. So you're looking at a grand total of roughly nine hours for every episode that's basically filmed in that more sort of formal way. And when you are uploading those things, there's there's no live sessions because, well, bandwidth, it chews up huge internet resources to upload a video. That's th almost two and a half plus hours long. So that is why we don't get to do these all the time. And then sometimes just not being here. Sometimes having to ship miniatures. There's lots of other things. I had debated with a little transparent cloth here. Maybe we try that later. I don't know. But we're really more interested in what can this paint do or not do. How long does it take to dry? Now it's a little less cold here. It's not 9 degrees anymore. So the furnace is not going off every 2 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the purple down here. Yeah, let's go with that here. So I'm basically right now using this as if it were the Reaper Clears. Because I just want to see what happens. So we're we're not thinning this down. Whatever water is in this is from just the moisture in the wet palette and nothing else. So you can see how that's showing through some of the purple or the white. Well, it's really an off-white. The usual Badger Steino Res Primer. Typical, just a couple of the off-whites. I think they call it Sandy Primer, whatever it is. I'd basically stick with the, the neutral stuff, the, the gray, the tan, sand, that sort of thing. So, again, typical, if I was using purple liner, this is about what I would be using. Something like this. Now, let us find, so it, it dries reasonably quick. Let's, let's see what happens when we use something like maybe this. Make sure that palette's not tilted off in the wrong direction. I'm take a little of this green. We'll throw it towards the jade just a touch. I wanted to see what the intensity of these colors were, because how do we know? I didn't know what the creature caster until I started using it. Didn't know until we gave it a shot. I'm just I'm avoiding the the color for right now because some of the hair color is still wet. I can see. Who knows? Maybe we give the color a different color. I don't know. Well, we'll just we'll. I'm just gonna stick with this application right here. There's no water added except for whatever moisture might be on the palette itself. I'm going to say that this continues to here. So there's almost a, I'm going to have a sash right there. There's also some fringe on that. We will go back later and do that. But this is usually, it's not a bad pair of opposites here. Doing the, the teal like this with the purple. And we'll get that sleeve there too. 
and think of it as well this is that sort of prelude to the the shaded base coat here although I just this was uh, it's kind of one of the first things I do when I'm testing out a new paint that I haven't used before actually now that I mention now I think about it it's how many times when people try new paint what do they try and do and what are the what are their ways of testing it? And I'm going to throw in a little more green. Maybe that also makes it a bit darker here. Just want to try and get underneath this sleeve. Don't know if you can see it, but that's all I want to do is just get there. And there's another sleeve over here. We need to get some stuff in there. And I think now we can just go ahead and hit this collar here and not have to worry too much. There. There's the rest. So just using the ye old craft brush, number eight round, like always. So I can see one thing I, I do notice is that there is a little bit of a satiny finish on this. So to me it is it really a big deal? Not really, because I won't be using these in isolation. I won't just be using only green stuff, world paints on things. That's really not how I do stuff, so not a big deal. Uh, here, let's... I'm going to go with some real quick here. Let's see if we can put some other colors in the face here just real quick before we get down into things with uh, got to let some other stuff dry here so I'm just trying to get some rosiness and the, the hands the face the typical typical spots there real quick I also wanted to test this to see you know, how translucent would that be while we wait for the rest of that green to dry, we're also going to take some of this, mix a little green in there. Like that. Oh, heck, we'll throw some of this in. I want to see what happens with some glazing here on, on this thing. Oh, he will. How's it going? Yeah, I didn't realize that it had been, geez, close to five days or so since the last live session. That was not wasn't really the intent. Actually, I wanted to try and do one this same time last night. It just didn't pan out. Uh, part of it had to do with all of those containers having to poke holes in them. So I was must have had 30 different containers that I'm poking holes in too. And that just, you wouldn't believe how long it takes to shake that many paint jars and poke holes in them. Now all of a sudden, next thing I knew, it was almost 3 o'clock, and I went, well, that's a little late, even for me to be starting. I just want to see what happens here. See, we're doing some wet into wet. I just want to see, well, do we get watermarks? If we do, what are they like? And doesn't, yeah, that's interesting. It's almost a bit. That's a little bit more like what happens with oils when I do that. Interesting. Yeah. Didn't don't know until you try. Oh, let's get some more dark in the hair too. So I just took some of the black and some of the Oh gosh, what is that? I'm gonna have to look. It is redwood brown. I mean, that's a red in it. No doubt about that. Okay, this is almost a, oh, what'd you call it, like a 1920s, early 1930s sort of a hairdo here in, in some ways. So you can kind of see how dark that little bit of a glaze is. This is probably just in general going to involve maybe a little bit more in the way of glazing than a and what you're again what you're used to seeing. Now let's see what happens when we take a touch of this sort of magenta type color here, mixing it with some of the purple. And 
Let's throw this right here. It's a little bit of an accent. It separates the two areas of turquoise. Good enough there. Let's do... Actually, I'm going to go further up the line with that sash color there. and I don't care that it blends in with a little bit of my turquoise that's still wet. First last is here. Uh, well, actually, it's well, we didn't start that long ago, did we? It's uh, 20 minutes ago. Eh, something like that. You, been, you yeah, I, I can, I can go back to the start. I did a lot of this. That's that. <laughs> that was a five minutes of that. So, yeah, yeah, I was just uh, shaking up the new abyss blue. Gosh, what was it called? Hmm. I wish, uh, not Midnight Blue, but it was an old Reaper color that I really, that was kind of a neat one. I liked that. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of the black here, looking to do some little quick darkening of the blade in a few spots here. Oh, what the heck, let's go. That's some of that ivory type color. We'll mix it in with this, well, other mix that we made. We're mixing it into our mix. So yeah, I know, let's see. Oh boy, I know last time there was so many people doing the, the chat thing that I was missing some people's questions or just their, hey, how you doing? So if that is the case from last time, I want to say sorry about that. Now here's another thing I'm noticing. It's weird because while well, the paint seems translucent, it seems like the, well, some colors are. Some colors are just naturally going to be more translucent than others. I mean, that's just kind of a fact of life with paint. That's just how it works. But this is interesting. These lighter colors seem to be last. Uh, well, I just looked at first last. That's why I said last. They, yeah, so they seem to be a little less on the translucent side. I'm oh, happy that finally started able to be building and painting models. Oh, just finished moving. That is a huge challenge. And I know I know a few people that are moving, so I want to wish them all the luck with that because that's just tch, pretty high on the not easy scale. Heck, I'm just moving studio stuff around for us. I'm trying to give Kathy a different work area, trying to create some, some work areas for me, adjust the work areas I have, and that process, I've been trying to do that for months and still continue doing other things. So moving the whole enchilada that right there, that's a yeah, that's a level ten difficulty for sure. Here's a little bit of that ivory. Let's see how that covers here. Hey Peter, how's it going? Welcome aboard. Uh, that's another new journey, but I tell you, it's been a journey of firsts and all kinds of stuff. Now, can I get this guy out without destroying stuff? Ah, okay. So this was the latest. Army painting series. Well, it was series 13. We just concluded this. See all that? That's not color shift paint. That's actually just the green stuff world metallics applied kind of in a true metallic way. And I just finished that series. And that's one of, uh, what would you say, Trevor, nine-ish figures or so. I think I just posted that yesterday. Which was, I believe, that was the it was called Patrons Day, so you thank your patrons on Patrons Day, and well, I tried to thank them with another video, and yes, I was able to get that posted. So I'm noticing that the lighter colors do seem, unless they're thinned down, yeah, okay, so that's interesting little experiment there I mean you never know until you try and as I mentioned before there is the 
moisture from the wet palette that's getting into this paint. So I have I haven't added any water to it, no mediums, no contrast, this, that, or the other. None of the usual stuff that I do to thin stuff down at all whatsoever. It's just, oh gosh, natural moisture, which sounds a little weird, but that's what it is. Oh, thanks, first class. Appreciate that. It was it was one of those things where, I want to see, you, you close your eyes and you see what happens when you open them, but it was kind of that way. I had absolutely no idea really what to expect. I just kind of said, well, guess what, guys? We're doing this. We're going to take these metallic paints. I even use some of the candy inks. And we're going to see what the heck happens. We're going to... <laughs> and, and I actually had to sort of... What would you say? Change course a little bit, Trevor. Because I was using a lot more of the candy inks and such early on. And then I realized, you know what? Maybe... Because I was trying to go all, all green stuff world, but... Next time around, and I'm going to do that on some of the Osteorics and a few other things, I'm going to go with maybe the contrast paints to go along with these metallics because they're just they're really interesting, really different. You can see how I'm starting to fill in a few little areas. Wow, that, that covers. What's interesting... People say, okay, hot take, first impression, whatever the heck the term is you want to say. Some of these things, as I mix these colors together here on a palette, yeah, look at that little swirl that's happening right there. That's, again, just the moisture of the palette doing a lot of that. It's almost like they're part Reaper Clears and part Pro Acryls. Because there's a few things that are happening here that sort of remind me of Pro Acryl, mostly in the mixing of this stuff. But then when I was doing the, the the glazing on this, it was in a way acting a little bit more like some of the Reaper Clears. So this it's right now just a quick snap judgment. It's kind of a hybrid between the two. I know that's not necessarily super helpful for everybody, especially those that maybe have never worked with the Pro Acryls or the Reapers. Sounds like a couple of bands right there. Now let us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which side, oh, that will go this side, and then this side. It's just a garden variety, non-metallic, ho-hum. Oh, we have a Gary in the room, and First Class also says, can't wait to see what the Bone Reapers, yes, that is something I believe I will be assembling the first Osiarchs tomorrow among, well, a billion other things. Uh, actually, this is entire, most of this week has been dedicated to assembling stuff. What did I put together? I think it was yesterday for the first time ever. Uh, Necromunda planes. I've got the, well, the Imperial planes, those are put together. Two of the fighters, right? Two of the fighters and then two of the bombers are going together now. Then I've got the orc planes. We'll put those together. And yeah, that is also another. That's going to be coming up too. We're doing that. Well, the the sisters. I mean, those get here when they get here. So, oh, you. Yeah, yeah like I'm not going to be doing sisters of battle. Uh, that's no way that's not going to happen. So we'll be getting those guys in the house, working with those. Now this is that we're starting to do something a little bit like what we would do with the maiden flesh here. And you can see I'm still working with the big old brush. It's a tiny little figure, big old brush. That's how it goes. For those that are a little bit new to this and you're shocked and horrified by that, well there's I don't know. I think there's a lot of things that I do with the paints and the brushes that tend to shock and horrify people. Not sure why. But we're going to take some of this right here. Let's pop a little more. 
rosiness few zones here while well, we got it hand then let's see what happens with some of these purples here so i'm going to take this is that abyss blue or whatever that's a dark purple we're going to mix it with some of this and it seems like best not to add too much water to that because it has that translucency to it and you can see what we're doing oh, we're just we're glazing in a few darks here just a few darks and actually just a word to the wise there'll probably be some more dark sword live sessions coming up towards the end of this month i just have i have a bunch of dark sword figures prepped and well that math that we were talking about earlier and oof, doing math and painting at the same time that's dangerous but in any case doing one of these live sessions is effectively three hours versus nine or ten i can almost do three dark swords and that amount of time and there's just a couple of these figures like this we'll try the green stuff world paints on them maybe there'll just be a little series of dark sword and green stuff world paints going together but i'll try different color schemes obviously speaking of different colors let's throw a little bit of this purple up into there that's that well abyss blue i'm just referring to it as purple right now let's do let's do something with our this right here so I'm looking for a something darker what do we got here that's that's a little too blue so this is to even that what is that summer sea blue it's got a lot of red in it so i think we're gonna we'll just go with what we got oh first last never played sisters yeah well i've painted so many metal sisters over the years i'm just kind of glad to be having something else to play with there as in paint with i haven't played 40k since well regularly fourth edition I did a tournament in fifth and a tournament in sixth and that was i think as far as that went but i i deserve it after all that all this time i deserve me some plastic sisters now let's go later with this because why not we're going to take some of that ivory we will mix it in with our little little teal color over here and see what happens oh yeah actually while we were getting set up for the lord of the rings game all of a sudden there was a a gasp and that's when Waleed showed me the picture of the new Mephistian which apparently that will be sent here as a commission to paint so he'll either be a recorded video or a live session it kind of depends because sometimes with the the commission things maybe that the color scheme is it just or the basing style is just it doesn't really work with a live session or you know I can do part of it in a live session so that's it we're just adding a little bit of light here and it's written now this is where it's sort of it seems a little more translucent than anything else so that's where I kind of go back and forth a little bit here with is it more like my Reaper clears or is it more like the pro acryls it's like i said it's not opaque like the pro acryls it's more transparent like the clears at, at least with what i've been playing around with here maybe if i'm not using the wet palette and there's no moisture getting into that it, it acts differently i don't know but let's just yeah see the way this is mixing in here and i it's really hard to give you a specific word or, or whatever 
But just as I see these kind of things happen, there's a, oh, this is it. There's a little more, a little more white, for lack of a better term. So the Reaper clears, they're not clear. They are just devoid of white. So they're essentially pure pigment. I, I just wish they would have called them you know, pure green, pure red, pure blue, or something along those lines instead of clear. I, I, I wish I could just go through all paint lines and delete every single name and just call them number one, number two, number something. And they don't even get names because they're usually misleading or difficult to pronounce or something crazy that just irritates me. That, that is my campaign, is to eliminate paint names. Hashtag no names. Oh, there we go. I want a t-shirt. I want hats. I want signs off the back of planes. I'm going to have a giant blimp that flies around the world broadcasting painting demos. And it's going to say hashtag no names. Oh, let's see. I wonder if it wasn't. The horrendous abominations is the Primaris line. Well, I don't know too much about the Primaris lines. Basically, as far as I know about them, they're bigger. <laughs> That's, and they have round knees. Uh, actually, I do somewhere, oh, like right here. I, This was in the swag bag at Adepticon. So this is the only Primaris Marine I've ever seen. I'll try and paint him maybe on a live session I just haven't determined should I do a specific what would you call them name chapter or should I just screw around and make up my own I know Trevor and I discussed the uh, the notion of making one of each chapter okay so here we're gonna we're gonna do Imperial Fists that's a video Blood Angels, Video, Dark Angel, whatever, all in the Primaris. Who knows, maybe we work into the, the, the other chapters. You know, what was that? Uh, the Howling Griffins or something like that. The the guys that are sort of uh, split red and yellow. I think that's what those guys were. Maybe I'm getting them mixed up with Howling Banshees. Oh, that's right. i got to assemble those. I found some old metal Howling Banshees. Now this is interesting. So I took some of the. It's basically I'm gonna call it Maiden Flesh, is we're because we're, we're talking in Reaper Clears. But it's more transparent than the Maiden Flesh. It's weird. It's sort. It covers. But it's in a. It just covers very differently than say the, the Maiden Flesh would. And it just, I'm going to have to use these for a while to figure out exactly what's going on with them. Okay, now I'm going to try and resolve some of the, the cheekbones here. Oh, jeez. There we go. Uh, that said, it's nice to see. Uh, reading, reading. Class, I get an update. Oh, a Dante or an Azriel. Jeez, I don't know if, uh, if I ever even seen one of the at the Azra. I don't think so. I don't think so. Again, 40k. Once things kind of went sideways and and the Astra Militarum came along and it sort of zonked my uh, Imperial Guard army that I was doing, and the Grey Knights kind of messed around with what I was doing with my own demon hunters because that's the last time I regularly played 40k was when there were demon hunters. So that's a while ago, to say the least. So I'm just mixing this together, just getting a kind of another rosy color right there, making sure the palette's in the right spot. And I'm going to actually... There we go. Just playing with my brightness a bit there. Just actually made it a little brighter. So yeah, we're just we're giving this the green stuff real paints a try. 
it's less about what colors on her to make some kind of artiste type thing. It's really more about crash testing paint, actually. Who knows? Maybe I should have called it that. I don't know. Nah, no, that's no good. YouTube doesn't like that. It would be exploitation of disasters. So, no, we're not doing that. But what we are doing is we're starting to put a little reflected light here. I, I think people can see that. I think you can see the, the cheekbone emerge there, and now we're working underneath there. But as we do this, and this is one of those instances of you are what you wear, guess what? we got to get some of this blue in here somehow. Some Somehow the color of her clothes must go onto the face. That'll be tricky, but we got to do it. And we're going to do that right here. Hopefully you can see just the ever so slight hint of... I'm going to do it over here. See that? Hint of green right in there. We'll do a little, little bit more. So that was... We did that to try and Again, reflect the color of the clothes onto the skin because you just you got to do that. There's uh, skin is not metal; it's not that reflective, but it will reflect its environment. And if you're wearing a hot pink shirt, well, I think you can tell what your face is going to have reflected on it. If you're wearing a black shirt or a black whatever. You're going to have 5 o'clock shadow. That's just how it goes. If you're wearing a bright red shirt, well, you now have a beet red chin and underside of your cheeks because that's how that goes. So if you don't like lime green chins or anything like that, well, then think twice about what clothes you're wearing because it will impact what your face looks like. Now I'm just gonna here, I'm just trying to expand to match the other side here, the, the lights on the face. Yeah, so interesting. I just Again, we're just sort of playing around here. We're just trying to figure out what can be done with this. What's possible? What does it do well? What does it not do so well? Now, again, this, a lot of the moisture in here is from the palette. I've just not been adding very much. Actually, I haven't been adding any at all myself like I usually would. I suppose the other thing, too, is anytime someone wants me to try a new paint or anything along those lines, the first order of business is, does it do anything different? I mean, what's the reason for using this? Is it just to have the name on it? Is it because it does one thing? So what's happened is that I've gone with sort of a triple play of contrast, clear, and monument. Well, creature caster. I like the I like the C's, the contrast, clear, and creature caster. I like those three together because each of the three things has different properties now in many ways the 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 contrast is sort of like a much more liquid version of the clears but some of the contrast are also like the liners which is a good thing now as i've been yapping here i think you can see there's a transition yeah i'm gonna See, it's it's darker, and then it goes a little bit lighter over here. Now, let's do something with the purple over here. We're going to take some of 
I want to make a couple of different purples or see if I can. So here we're taking some of the white. It's an off-white. We're mixing in with our whatever that purple is. And we'll go over here. It should be easier to see it right over here. And this is typically, uh, let's say I'm using something like the Reaper purple, uh, the clear purple, and you you mix something like the Maiden Flesh with it, something that's white, something that's lighter and opaque. That's typically what happens. But this certainly is, it is different than the clears, no doubt about it. Uh, this right here what I'm doing mixing the light stuff in here it would be acting differently you would you would notice it more and by more I mean you would just see it and go whoa okay whereas here I've already hit it a couple of times and I'm just not really seeing a whole bunch of difference going on to the point where I have to keep adding more light color to it to have an impact now you can tell I'm also trying to keep this somewhat away from, now I'm going to add some of this blue in here too, trying to keep it away from the magenta. Now that's interesting, actually adding that blue made that more opaque. Interesting. So I think some colors are going to have more opacity than others. With the Creature Caster line, I have to say, now that's its unique thing, is that everything is really opaque. It doesn't matter what it is. If it's yellow, red, green, doesn't matter. It's going to be really opaque, as in you put it there and it covers. Now, this is uh, definitely different because I just did a few, again, another couple of brush strokes to the pink there and actually what I want to do here is in my shadow areas now I'm not necessarily going for the translucent look here but I, I like a little bit it's also going to make those shadow areas I think a little more interesting if we've got the turquoise and purple mixed together and that's what we're doing it's another way of finding a a shadow color here. Again, purple. That's the abyss blue. Actually, we'll mix it with our turquoise into the shadows. It goes, and now the shadows just have a little different look to them, which is nice. Oh, let's get down here too. Because we can add lighter, lighter colors, but eventually we are going to want some dark tones in there. Let's get a little separation with the skin. Let's get a little separation with this. We're not trying to do any kind of a line there. Now you can't see what I'm painting in there. I just need to, again, clean that up. So what I can see, it, it can get a little weird, and I don't even know what the how to describe it. When you're working into the lighter areas, that's where the, the colors get, well, they also get much more, oh, shiny. The, so can you see the, the lights kind of bouncing off of that? That is not too intense camera light that's just it's actually being a little bit on the shiny side so something to be aware of it is not matte again I, I don't care I mean for this purpose I, I don't care I'm gonna be going over it with the army painter anti shine and that most likely will then make it flat the only reason it, it stands out is because I'm used to the to the pro acryls and the clears which are both I mean they are seriously matte colors 
I, uh, I've used Vallejos in the pa and those, and even GW paints are more shiny compared to the Creature Caster and the, the Reaper Clears. So, like I said, it's not an indictment of it or something like that. Like, oh, it's shiny, it's bad. It's just, that's... It stands out because normally what I'm working with is not in the in any way, shape, or form have any shine to it. So again, we'll just keep working this here. Now let's go back to our little piece of parchment here and get some darker stuff on that. If we can, it's like I said, I'd the whole purpose of this is to figure out what these guys can do, and that is the green stuff world paints. Here, let's get some more staining on our piece of parchment here. Now I am going to just look over at the chat real quick here. I'm just going to make sure that the chat function hasn't died because now it hasn't done it in a long time but sometimes it does I'm just doing a quick check here nope everything is good that's still going thing is with the you're gonna stain these things right you don't want to do that too much because if you do any kind of lettering or whatever that we try to paint in here well it's gonna be hard to see it definitely will be hard to see it. So I'm just going to again use my finger in a few places here. We're mostly going after the edges of that. Now let's do something with this sword hilt here. It needs something other than the color that it currently is. <laughs> we'll just call it that. Now I may grab some of the there's some other yellows too. Oh, I thought that said crime yellow, but it's a cyber yellow. And again, doing the shake here. You can hear the agitator. And got to poke that hole. And that just is putting a hole in the paint jar right like so without sticking it through my finger oh and also contents under pressure so that happened on I'm gonna say about a third of the jars that I open not every single one just this one for sure oh where are we gonna put this stuff so the water is gonna move I also want to try this because it's sort of a moment of truth type of deal here. Just going to grab me something to drink. Because I want to see what happens when this hits. This, how opaque is it? Because I know what the creature caster stuff does. I know what the clear yellow does. We're about to find out what this does, which is interesting. Because that's one of those colors that covers a lot. Huh? Who'd have thought? Interesting. So what was that? Wow. The, the colors so far that of the lighter ones that really covers the most, that's actually the yellow of all things. Usually, I mean, most people can, I don't know, bear with me on that or bear witness on that that typically colors like yellow not going to cover super well but that one did now we're again now we're back into the face here looking for some some additional highlights let's see if we can't Put a little, let's do some actual eye type things on this here. So, where are we at? 
I just want to make sure you can see what it is that I'm doing here. Took the black and mixed it with the purple. Just trying to give her a little bit of expression. We've got the eyebrow and eyelid that we're working on here. Okay, because I'm used to, for here, typically would use the, the liner paints. That is usually my go-to thing for these kind of areas. And not because they're meant for painting lines, they're just basically really dark versions of the clear paints. Now, I don't really have, I don't have the, the classic red color out in the palette, so let's see what we can do with, with this. Just do some, again, yeah, just do some light glazing on the lips here, then we'll go over the top of that. Throwing a little bit of, oh, here, I got a couple strands of the hair down there that got abandoned. Not on purpose. Let's throw, let's see if we can't get some lights into the hair here also. So I am, I'm getting surprised by, at one moment, things don't quite cover the way I'm thinking they might, and then there's other times where they just they cover like crazy, completely unexpected, which means here, just as a quick, what would you say, an overall type of thing, you're just going to have to try each and every one because each and every one is going to have some different properties to it. They will, They don't all act the same. They're not kind of unified the way say the the pro acryls are where there's the overarching theme of matte and opacity here you're going to get a little bit of shiny you're going to get some transparency but then at the same time some opacity so like, like i said just little things to keep in mind nothing that's that's earth shattering or whatever I don't necessarily, you know, the paint doesn't have to do this one thing. It's not that important. I just need to know, like I said, the things that it's going to do well and the things that maybe work better in another paint line. And who knows, maybe it's just... It's what I'm trying to paint here. It's that the combinations of colors. So the little tassels that I saw early on, we're just going to give those a quick little de facto semi-gold fringe type thing there. Oh, let's do something with this blade that's got a little more oomph to it. Another technical term there. Like maybe reflect some of the clothes. Like right there. Like you do. Then. No, no, not that light. The head would have been a little too light. What I'm trying to do now. Is get this where you can see it, of course, for one thing. There we are. And now we're going to take our, well, a skin color here. i let a little bit of that yellow color or orange color mix into that. Work back into the forehead here. I wish I could angle this a little different way for you guys to see it. 
unfortunately I just won't be able to work on it myself and that's kind of important for me to be able to work on it but we're trying to soften up also the edge of the lip there so we're going to take some of this, oh, some of that, and let's work on that lower lip here. Just to lighten that up, we don't want to give it any sort of extreme lights, at least not right away. We want to work our way towards that. And then, like I said, some of our other skin tone here. Maybe something that's got a little bit more yellow in it. Still thinking about the reflected light there. Here, let's go. We always have to have that. I think there's a, like a necklace there too. I've got to mess around with yet, so let's we'll do that here real quick. We got this yellow. Touch of the white, and we're gonna go into that with some darker stuff too later on. And here we go. All right, let's see what we can. Let's mess with some freehand on this thing here. Just see what happens. And I'm going to do my typical little thing that I always have fun with. I'm going to take some of this, like so. Once upon a time, there was a something with a sword and a spell and a thing with a thing and it started like that and we're going to do that and then maybe 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 we grab something that's on the greenish side here speaking of green maybe we do some kind of swirls here that maybe have some some leaves on them this is uh, I wanted to see what happens because I know what happens when I use the typical clear and liner for things like this I know exactly how they're gonna act I have no idea how these are going to act though so okay I'm just doing some some squiggly things here. I want to dig a little branch type things like that. Now that that is dry, we will go back in with something that's lighter, maybe like this. Who knows what we're going to get. Yeah, Trevor, definitely there's a glossiness to this and I guess satin is the word for it now here's the other thing too is that when water hits these like yeah see it really I mean water really impacts these water does not impact the clear and liner paints the same way like by, by not even close so that is also something that's very different about these. So what we're going to do is give that a little bit of a line there. And then we'll try and add a little bit of... So it's almost like that uh, decorative capital right there. See that? Again, sorry, the shininess of the paint is making it really difficult. It's almost like I'm working with metallics here in a way. So obviously just doing one miniature like this, I can't tell you, is the paint any good? Is it not any good? I, I have to try it in many different ways. I've got to try this, mixing it with my fluorescent paint on some object source lighting. we got to try it on a lot of different things. But now it's time to get some lettering in here. And 
you see we're just we're trying to break out some individual words here again the shininess of the thing I, it's it's weird because it doesn't look super shiny to me and then the camera hits it and or the lights or whatever and it just kind of bounces around so we're keeping this relatively simple here not going to do a whole not going to do a whole United States Constitution there. We're just going to go with that much. And now let's go with something. Ah, let's go with something like this. And where are we at here? And this is a little bit of that if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere type of thing. We're just. Taking that color now, and we are trying to insert it a bit into our, oh, whatever this is. Who knows? Maybe it's a, oh, it's something about flowers. I don't know. It's gardening tips. I don't think there are too many flowers. Well, maybe some of them survived the 9-degree weather around here. I don't know. I don't think so. But, yeah, it was wind chills actually around zero for several days. So I'm thinking that did a number on pretty much all the flowers around here. Speaking of flowers... So there's some colors that don't mind going thinner, and then there's other ones that just do not like that at all. And the one thing I'm noticing, I mean, if, if you're saying, give me a quick verdict, I'd say just <laughs> avoid water on these things. Do not let water get to them because water just has a weird effect on them. So again, I'm just going to try and find myself a focus here. That's the best I can do. We need to give her some eyeballs here. So we got, we're got. we just going to use the Abyss Blue and see how that works. I'm going to try and keep this oriented so you can see it. Here, just trying to get one eye over here. Boy, it is not cooperating whatsoever. And it, it's almost like there's a little bit of a weird something or other on the end of the brush, which, again, normally is not there. Sometimes there's weird artifacts with paint that can do that. Okay, I'm just trying to get some of the light back in there. Just going to reduce the size of that pupil a bit, and then we'll try and go back around the outside of the eyes here with a little bit of the... The eyebrow there. Now it's not like, and it would, uh, geez, I guess maybe I shouldn't just say, well, I don't get water into this. But it, it does neat things with the glazing, but when you're not doing glaze stuff with it, it's like, wow, you just better keep the water out of the paint because it will do some strange, strange things. Now here I'm just trying to get a little bit of a dark next to the, for my gold there, and then we need some separation on the sword hilt. We need to do some fingers here, so we're adding some of the magenta to that red-brown. A 
what else do we have over here? We got this necklace that needs to have some darks around it. And I'll just go back in with the lights. Again, with, with paints, you have, it's hard to not have built-in expectations because it's, it's what you are used to. That's why it's weird sometimes people that try out the, the clear aligners for the first time. It's freaky for them. They say, wow, that is really, that is weird and different because, well, the paint is different. That's not something they're used to using. So it's just, it makes sense that it's going to be Maybe a little bit of a shock at first. The, the creature caster paints certainly were. I know when I first started to use them, I liked them way better as painting in 2D on a piece of canvas board than I did on miniatures. And then as I continued to use them and then combine them with other paint colors then I just I saw other things that they could do all right let's get the sword blade here we need some more sparkle to this let's get the middle of this blade with some more light going on there We gotta get our edges here. Now, skin tone again. I need to find some lights here on, well, stuff like the hands. I know it looks really light on camera, but part of that is the, you've, you're catching some shine from the actual paint itself. Let's do some lighter colors on the turquoise here. We're just going to keep trying to build evenly here like we usually do. And we can, let's see, we can definitely go lighter, but this has a little more of the it's a little less turquoise, a little more blue. So in, in some ways here now, when I start to add the, the lighter tones to this, unlike the, the clears and the liners, or the clear paints, when you add the lighter color to it, in some ways here now it acts a little bit more this is acting more like say the pro acryls would now we got the purple down here I'm gonna actually let's see what happens when we try to get a little bit of that into the skin tone here and then Uh, yeah, we. I'm going to try and sneak some here into this part of the dress, because why not? And some onto the skin. Actually, I'm going to need a little more reflected light over here. Let's do the pink here. Got to clean this out, get some... Yeah, see, this is what's kind of weird, and it's not necessarily showing up on camera. 
There's just there's some weird things going on. Now the other thing I like to do is is essentially direct tests where I use multiple paints on the same figure. So who knows? I think this stuff here as a standalone well, you're never really going to see paints as standalone. I don't just use one kind of paint. And I mean, just really, does anybody just only use one paint brand? I don't really think so. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I. That's just not going to be me. The, the thing is, okay, what would be the purpose of incorporating these? Is there a color that, that's in this range that's not in another? Well, yeah, but you can I can make my own colors. So that's really not necessarily something that's going to sell me, or at least me. Now, everybody's different. I don't need one specific color from a paint. I can always just sort of make that myself. Oh, sorry. I gotta bring back my chat here. Oh, oh, there's. Hey! Holy smokes! Uh, let's see. I, I, there's Green Stuff World. Holy smokes, uh, is it uh, Javier that's in the house here? Yeah, oh, we're going to be using, where'd it go? We're going to be using some of the coolest stuff ever. I love the tall foliage. All of them are super. Oh, hey there, Albert. How's it going? Oh, um, yeah, I don't... Uh, so I think you saw the the Necrons there. Oh, actually, I gotta show this because basically the the people that make the paints that were done doing this, all that that shiny stuff there, those are the Green Stuff World metallics. Oh, and of course, Green Stuff World roller on the base. Yep, and we'll just show you real quick the. So this is the kind of that see what that tall foliage can do. That's what we want to put on here. So I think we'll have some fun with that. So sorry for the the station interruption there, but I think it was only appropriate when you have the the maker of some of the products that you're using when you have them in the house. You gotta just say hey. All right, let's get a little more light in there. So we've gotten some good stuff going on here. And so this this has been the abyss blue. I'm gonna actually throw some more some more of that, even maybe get some of the black with it here. Let's get some real strong darks in here now maybe you won't be able to notice but that's definitely making a difference also I'm, I'm trying to do a yeah here let's also get some of this I mix these two together so that is the blue gray dusk and the abyss blue together and see that's going to make an even more bluish tone here aha cuz remember in my f in the deepest parts of my folds I like to throw in colors that oh gosh I don't know if you want to say they're opposites or not but that is something it was just Otherwise, you end up with really uninteresting shadow areas. They're all just too similar. So now we're going to go more straight up to the that blue-gray color here. I'm going to get that down into this fold. Hopefully you can see it right there. 
and there. We've got that orc and we are going to do it on the sword blade. We're going to do some of that here. Remember, color goes somewhere, must go everywhere. Uh, we've we've had we try to stick with this sort of the same. What would you say? Core group of colors. Always like to keep it into that between seven and ten color range. That's why I figured. Okay, maybe we do the the ring race to see what's the range of grays and darks that we can make out of this. There's uh, plenty of light colors, that's for sure. No shortage of light colors. Now, let's see if we can inject a little more dark into this. So we're going to take the green here, the black. We'll mix those together. Make sure the palette's in the right spot. There we go. Where are we at? Oh, there it is. Now here's where I'm going to play around with a little bit of glaze. So I just, we threw some water in there. Nothing fancy. It's just water. And we're just letting a little capillary action do its thing in there. And we're going to hit some of these folds here. Again, trying to let some of the purple work its way into there. And by purple, I actually, what was it, was it again? The amethyst, abyss blue, amethyst blue. That was the reaper color. Okay, I did finally remember it. It was amethyst blue. And the thing about that, it was just wild because you could, when you mixed it, it was dark blue. But then when you mixed any sort of lighter color with it, it started to shift towards purple. Now I've got, there's a little bit of a cord here, so this is well, one of the skin tones. Can you even, see? it's kind of blocked by the sword, but trust me, there's a, like a cord there. Now, these, actually I want to get some of this color too into some of my skin colors if I can. Just a bit. So this is that the yellow here. I remember that really that had some oomph to it. Oh, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll just say GSW because well, so many times on well, my phone, it it's you know the the keyboard is programmed to recognize words that are used a lot, but it recognizes GSW. As soon as I put a G down there, it wants to put the S and the W in it. So we'll reflect a little bit of our sword blade in there. Now this is a dark sword figure right here. You know what? Let's get in our little freehand stuff over here. Let's get a little more of the yellow into this too. I'm gonna get some of the some of the green. There we go, some of the yellow and the green. And that is something. Okay, so this is something we've definitely learned is that less water is better. You don't really have to. You know, maybe that's kind of the instinct is to just keep grabbing some water to thin things down, but. These are thinner, and you don't really have to, unless you're going to do a glaze, you can get away with a whole bunch less water, as in, like, none. So I'm just trying to find slightly air. A little, I'm going off the palette here again, trying to get away from some of the water.
So what I might, oh, well, this is another thing. What I could also do is I can set up my wet palette, but not just, uh, just basically not use the water. So the, another idea behind the wet palette is it also takes away the some of the crazy kickback that white does to the camera. So see how we've now got, yeah, okay, this is something that we learned this right here I went off the palette here I think you can see what I'm pointing to over this this made it easier this having all this water in here not really you don't need to have it there so no water actually works really well so something something we learned here and we'll we'll try it in the the next one too I'm just going to keep going off the palette here. Well, this is my palette also. That is palette paper down there. So it's not like I've, I'm have i not using a palette. Oh, yeah. So even this is working easier. Yeah, next time I will just not have the, the wet palette going. And we'll work with this. That's not really unusual because uh, never forget when I was just in a hangout with the folks from Creature Caster, we were talking about the paints because we were helping them work on those. And they sort of said, you know, the paints really weren't designed for a wet palette because Kathy and I both used them on our wet palettes and they had worked out okay. But the they kind of made it more than a little clear that yeah, they if they do weird things on a wet palette, it's because they're not really supposed to be there. And I have noticed creature caster paints do weird things on the wet palette, mostly when they've been sitting there a while. So that is again something that can pop up. Now let's go back to aha this purple here. And now as my wet palette starts to dry a little bit, some of that initial water, it's been absorbed by the paint and everything. Jeez, wow, that is interesting. Did not expect that. Well, one thing I want to do here, so we got this stuff going. Let's get our... our eh. And maybe 15 minutes I want to do the foliage stuff. Because that will impact what happens here also. Speaking of which, oh, what the heck. I'm going to get some a uh, little touch of this magenta down in here. Like sneak some in. Sorry if she's wandering off camera there. I want to do this. Yeah. So wow, okay. We're gonna we're gonna have to have a different palette approach to these because doing so leads to a very different result. Now that will mean that maybe the paints dry out faster and I'll just have to keep putting more out. I mean it's no big deal, it's not like I haven't done that before. So an interesting little discovery there. And I suppose I can also play around. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to do that here. I have enough time, but get the Army Painter Anti-Shine and hit this thing and see what that does with some of the satiny shininess. It's just the Army Painter stuff, even though I put it on pretty light, it still would take a while to dry, and I just we don't quite have the time for that. Now, I want to do something with the hair. So, again, that is one of the skin colors. That is blushing flesh mixed with the yellow. Oh, hey, Michael, how's it going? Yeah, this is, that's kind of some, some bright colors there. Well, I, 
It tends to be this way with the Dark Sword figures, though, doesn't it? They tend to be brighter colors. I don't know if it's the subject. Well, it's got to be the subject matter. They tend to lend themselves to those those brighter colors. Speaking of which, that I put that yellow into here, and again, that's another instance where the yellow really does cover. And we'll find some more of these highlights in the hair. But, yeah, you know, I'm fooling around with all the yellow in the hair. What's sitting right over here? The sword hilt. I don't want those to get too similar to each other, which, now that I'm thinking about it, I completely forgot to add some green to that. Now, here we are going to go, we're going to water this up. And we are going to do some glaze of it here. Interesting. I wanted to see what would happen, especially there. Okay. So what we're, we're, again, playing around with the, the new Green Stuff World paints. This is all exclusively done with the green stuff world stuff oh oh michael says the uh, yellow looks completely transparent what's weird is that this yellow right here that you think i mean you would think it would not it just look at this here uh, but right over here and it just it covers to an insane degree these right here that was just me barely touching the the yellow paint onto there it's just crazy had uh, I did not expect that whatsoever. Now I'm gonna try and find me a little highlight line on this side. We gotta get some lights on the knuckles here. And so again, I'm pulling. It's weird. I'm pulling paint off of the wet palette onto the dry palette. And sure as heck, getting different results from it. I just would have figured. I am. I did not expect that in any way, shape, or form. Now I'm trying to actually reflect the color of the dress in that section there. And I'm thinking. I'm thinking I want to get some there. Okay. You know, I like to put pink in my sword blades. Yeah, the, like, see here, we did the, the freehand on, on this guy here on that. And it was interesting that having any kind of water in the paint as you're trying to do that freehand, just it was going kind of wonky all over the place. And as soon as I took it off of the wet palette and then just started using it here, I mean, look at this. it was much easier to work with the drier that it was. Not that you can't do glazes with it. You can. But from now on, I will definitely work with it in a different way. And this is this is what I meant about crash testing new paint. Because you just never quite know what the heck's going to happen. Now, I want some green here. There is no green anywhere in the skin tones. We need some. And maybe not quite there, but maybe a little there, a touch right here. Another little bit over here. Now this is where, oh no, actually, yeah, see I watered that down intentionally. That was what we're looking for on that. Now, less watery. So we're taking this off of the wet palette. We're going... We're going dry. We're getting this brush out of the way. Oh, thanks. Uh, I always like to mess around with the pinks. Now, that's more of a magenta pink. Typically, again, speaking in Reaper Clears, I'd be using probably the red, 
the clear red paint at that point. But we're we can't rely on those same old things. We gotta we're switching it up here. Those paints are not available. Well, they are to me, but we're not using them. But they're actually they're hard to get sometimes, especially outside the U.S. So this is another reason why I'm trying to find different paints. Uh, oh, speaking of different paints, the Chimera colors are maybe on their way here again. I, I feel bad, especially after the first box went missing. Oh, actually, Green Stuff World has something new. If you check out their Instagram page, I think it's called a page, probably on their Facebook page too. There's some new molds. Uh, one is sort of like a conduit, pipes, and then another one is, they're both sci-fi themed. The other one is consoles and, and monitors. So I think I may have to snag some of those before the sisters or any other 40k stuff is done. Because somehow I think I got to do that. I think that could be fun messing around with those. Uh, especially with the fluorescent paints. What is that egg yolk orange color on the palette? So uh, if you mean this one over here on the left. Uh, <laughs> I almost said peach fuzz, but uh, peach flesh. And then the uh, yellow is cyber yellow. Yeah. There is an, an interesting orange here, this Go Mango. But like I said, we are trying to keep this down to a minimum. I, there's reds over here too. Let's see, I think this one, that's a pretty good Hellfire Red. That would be clear red, basically. But we're not using that. We're trying to just go with these original colors that we threw out. See, so much water got into that, so I'm going to take it off of there, actually move it onto the dry palette, see what happens. We're going to do a little bit of glazing here, so you're going to notice this probably pick up in intensity. Oh, and it does. Yeah. So as we're doing a couple of glazes here, what the heck, we're going to kill that completely. Needed some shadow on it. Do some of that here. So this is where now the paint starts to take on more of the Reaper Clear properties. Yeah. But I had to get it away from the water, which is just, that's pretty wild. To be able to use this as more of a, well, dry glaze is the term that I like to throw around for that. I know some people are just say, "What the heck do you mean a dry glaze?" So again, we're going we're going with the dry palette here. Fortunately, that fits on screen. Let's say we're going to lighten this up a bit here. That's the ivory color. There is a pure white, but you know, we stay away. Oh, mango is the one in the middle. It's no, actually, that's not on the palette. That is not. That's the. So I'm not familiar with the name. That's the peach. So peach and then the yellow one, which is cyber yellow. That's right. Like I said, what we've kept this to to be as simple as possible. Here, let's grab some of this turquoise. We're gonna bring some of this off the wet palette, and we'll play with it here. Yeah, a little more like so. Now, like I showed a little bit earlier, and I'll show it again, that we use the Green Stuff World. Well, I think we use some of the intensity inks as well. We use some of the candy colors as I was working on the Necrons. We'll, we'll show those again. So, wow, I'm really seeing... 
this is how we're going to work in the future. Okay. Well, good to know. Good to know. Work drier with these. They like to be worked with drier. Oh, we need to get some darks in here, too. Now, somehow, I've got to figure out a way of that. So I just did this, I just threw some blue on that. I mean, parchment or paper is not a super reflective surface, but it was just, it was too brown, especially versus all of the turquoise here. So we just kind of knocked it down. Yeah, now see here, we're, this had actually a chance to dry out a little bit. So that's one thing to kind of add a little water to sort of reconstitute something. Now I'm not saying don't use this with a wet palette or anything like that. It's just for the way I, I guess, tend to use paints, for me, going to the dry palette was just made more sense. Which is, I mean, that's cool because, well... The folks that are have seen these videos for a while, and if you watch some of my older ones, you'll notice there's no wet palette. The wet palette is a much newer artifact. So we're, once again, trying to work in some highlights in our hair. Oh, heck, I'm going to go with some of this and some of the yellow here. I got this right by where her eye is. Now, you see how we've got the the turquoise and the, the makeup color there, which means that this should stand out fairly nicely next to that. Let's get a little more highlights in here. It's not dry brushing those on. We're just scumbling it a little bit, the paint would certainly cover. I mean, it's just not a dry brush. I just tend to call it a damp brush. I'm going to do this and then maybe do another glaze with that red-brown here. Like so. So I had to in some ways, you have to lighten things up to darken them back down again. I know that sounds crazy. But some paints actually work better that way. I know that's that's something I more did with the clears. The, the Pro Acryls, because they cover so well and are so matte in their finish, it's a little less necessary. Here, we're also going to tone these down which is interesting because we actually have to tone down the yellow because the yellow was it just covered so much or so efficiently I guess is more the word didn't think that was gonna have to happen so we got the necklace there what do we need to do just trying to think here with the face. I think we got the eyes pretty well set now. Pretty well set. I'm also going to tone this down. What the heck? I'm going to go even a little bit further with this. So, yeah, we're going down here to the, the drier portion of the palette and looking to get some even more darks on the underside of that. We need some too. The sword blade has a whole lot of middle tones in lights. It doesn't really have any darks except for the area up towards the tip here. So we are going to go right here. 
with one of those, oh gosh, I don't even know what you would call it, but just a small area of dark. Maybe this is where it's reflecting another dark part on the figure. Now let's now he now this is the uh, the flip side of okay we work on the the dry pellet well I went down there to hit that that paint and it was all dry so just realize okay yeah dry pellet yay but there's a reason why you call it dry all of a sudden you can't quite do the same thing that you're doing on the wet pellet. So okay, that gives me a, see, a little more juice now between from that side to the other side on that. That's the the craziest thing. Now the clear yellow, the Reaper clear, it's transparent. I mean, you don't you won't be doing something like like this necessarily with the the clear yellow of the Reaper variety, but for some reason, this one and the Creature Caster Yellow, you can get some pretty fierce, lighter tones out of those. Not sure why. I am not an alchemist or a paint formulist. I just use them. That's all I do. I don't make paint. And I've, I've just had to try so many new paints, and even the, the Chimera colors, they act differently, too. If those actually do arrive here, finally, at some point, and the post office does what they're supposed to do, those are going to be a really different type of paint to work with. All right, so we've got ourselves a decent amount of lights here on our scroll I'm just going to try and find a bit more light here in the center part of this to get a little more definition with our the words there well <laughs> whatever those words are don't know Going back to my face here to pull out some of sort of this line, sort of down the center here. Now we also need there's just there's nothing that separates this. We have all kinds of neat definition and shading here above the eye. We need to do the same thing below on the cheekbone. Now that's a little difficult because, well, it's the lights are kind of bouncing off of some of the lighter colors. So I'm going to throw some of this ivory back out there. Ivory tusk is what it's called. Fruity Toots is back. Yeah, it's like I told everybody earlier, the plan was for last night. Well, I guess you would say this morning. I don't know. But it was definitely... I was supposed to be doing it my time, what would you say, Wednesday morning at 2.30. That's when I was planning on starting stuff, but things kind of got in the way, and, well, we're doing it tonight, well, this morning, I guess we'll say. All right, now let me grab some of this. We're going to try and dry it out a little bit here. Let's see what we can do underneath the eye here. Now, sorry I've got to hold it this way, but I need to be able to see it. I'm going to just thin that down, see what happens. All right, there. It's probably imperceptible on camera, but there's actually now a significantly different, or a significantly different, a significant difference in the line there. Speaking of lines, we got to get some darks here. So we're just doing a glaze. It's just a quick little glaze. Now, of course, oh, we've got plenty of, what are the washes? There's a bunch of green stuff world washes, which are elsewhere, and the intensity inks. 
Oh, and of course the candy inks like this. But once again, I'm going to show this. So this was another thing that we did here. This is with the the metals. And that's part of my latest Patreon series. I just posted this episode. I think it was on the 19th. Yeah. Just posted that on the 19th. So when you do that Army Painter Pledge level, and I think you see that scrolling across the screen right about now, there on the bottom, oh my gosh, it's closer to 250 hours worth of videos that you have access to. It covers everything imaginable. Object source lighting, color theory, if you want to call it that, freehand, non-metallic metals, and now true metallic metals. I'd never done that before. And now I just did a Oh gosh, about a 14-hour series on true metallic metals. And they were getting a little more here, shadow. Now this is, it's longer than I would normally spend on a figure like this, or at least to get it to this point. And that's pretty obvious why, because, well, this is a whole new paint here. Whole new paint line we've never tried. Just trying to get used to it, figure out what it can do. Here, let's get our darker color into this. Oh, thanks, Michael. Uh, I think I've got some of the other ones here too. Uh, do to do. Oh, yeah, this was this is a fun one because again, this is the. The green stuff world texture rollers used to make that base and yeah see how we got the oh here you go look at see that blue and the red and the as we that's not the color shift paint that is just the metallics look at that see how that shifts a little bit and then you get the the glow what's weird is that the whole point of doing that series was to show how to do object source lighting and metallics Little did I know by episode four that it was going to be all about color shifting. Who would have thunk it? Certainly not me. I was not expecting that. All right, we are going to get a little bit of all de facto staining in here. It's looking a little bit light just on one side and you know what even right there because I need a little separation where that hand is so see what's happening as we push this around here let's grab a little more so just a couple of things we've noticed when the, the paint is wet it just handles differently uh, you can do some wet into wet things too with it we found that. Speaking of wet and wet, that's what we're kind of messing with right about now. Right up here in that area. Now we've got green in here. I'd like to sneak in a little more orange there. Now over here we're going to Look for some kind of reflected light there. So again, I sorry if this wanders off camera or, or whatever. This is also zoomed in, so it's more sensitive focus-wise. So if you're wondering why, don't oh, yeah the. Uh, I think actually. Uh, on the Green Stuff World Facebook page, I posted a bunch of images of the, the new Necrons there. And it was pretty, like I said, it was interesting. We combined the primary combination was the candy inks and all the different metal colors. And there definitely, there was, I want to say there was four... There was five definite favorites that emerged out of that. 
Now there was a couple of the metals I didn't try. We were trying to keep it as like just like this, not using every single metal color because that can sometimes be confusing or mask results. Just finding some more highlights here. I need one right there. Okay, that's in a little nice separation there. She's like saying, look at this here. Why in the world are you planting those flowers a month early? Don't you know those are perennials? Speaking of flowers, I'm just going to try and glue some on here real quick. So we got a couple of different things. We've got these flowers here and we got tall foliage. Let's see if we can't combine these two. I'm just going to get some of these things out of harm's way. Now the tall foliage, we'll rip some off here. Actually, I'm going to get this glove off my hand so I can actually feel what I'm doing. I take off just a bundle of this. And first things first, let's see how tall it is. You can see, look at that. It's almost like a shrub back there. It is, it's got some height to it. Do we want a big old shrub back there? Well, that's going to cover that for the most part. What I am going to do is add some smaller bundles and scissors. Snip. And then figure out where should this go. And I'm thinking over here is probably the ideal spot. Let's not drop it on the floor. So right about there, I'm going to say is a decent spot. Super glue here. And you notice Another reason why this is an ideal area, well, it should be, it's flat, relatively flat anyway. And you can see we can spread this out a bit. And see how it kind of sticks out from behind the character, makes the character kind of come forward. It gives it sort of a, a backdrop when we need a foreground. And I'm wondering if these flowers here can be a decent foreground. So I just ripped some off. That's a little too much. Let's cut that down a lot. Yeah, all right. So let's just pop some of this over here. I wish I had my tweezers. I'll look and see if I've got some in here. Aha, I do have a tweezers. So that'll do a couple of things. It's also going to hank, help, hank, help anchor the, the tall shrubs. Now, like we were saying, we needed a foreground here. What does that do? Is that just, ah, you know what? That's not too bad, but I think we got to cut some of that down. It's a little too much in the way of flowers there. Ah, that's what I need. All right, so maybe that's too much there, but over here on the side might just work. So time for some glue. And set you right into there. So now what it's starting to do, see it's starting to frame the miniature on either side. Now I could even do, where's my, here we go, 
we're looking for now it's these are fall I don't know if we want to add these but also from green stuff world leaf cutters and that's what these are right here I don't know if I want well what the heck let's give it a shot I'm just gonna actually throw a little bit of few dots of super glue here just a few and I'm just gonna see if I can't grab a leaf or two I'll just throw those on the says some ground cover here there it also oh, it gives me a different texture here slightly different texture get that one leaf and stick him over there now I don't necessarily have to use super glue here I could be using oh my sand and gravel glue I just didn't want to have to take the time to grab a whole new thing of glue out here so again just these are the cut leaves yeah let's get me I'm just looking for right the right shape so now even another it's another color sort of matches the hair a bit it sets off the, the cloak down here so I got the purple that sort of matches the green that's in the flower here starts to match some of this oh hey hey Josh how's it going Oh, nope, Fruity, Fruity Toots has to... Yeah, okay. No, that's no problem. Well, and you know, you can always watch these in the in full at any time. Because I know I can't always watch people's entire streams either myself. There's some battle reports where I have to watch them five times to be able to actually see the whole thing. So I'm going to do something here. I'm going to cut this short. So how you doing there, Josh? And, oh, hey, Paul. Yeah, it's... It's, it advances quickly sometimes, that's for sure. And that's even with all these new, all the new paints that we're trying here. So I'm going to try and get this guy stuck right there. Yeah. Again, we're, we're framing the miniature here. Now there's also, there's a whole bunch of little small leaves left over here from the the tall foliage we could even basically sort of collect those for lack of a better term and try and scatter those as tiny leaves but what I'm gonna do is I got this little piece right here that's actually gonna go more like his ground cover here and it's gonna let the glue hold that for a second so we see we still got our rocks there you go. Still see the rocks. And we got our leaves here. Foliage. So a color reflecting the color that's on the miniature with their foliage. Setting then some of the, the miniature away from that. But some of our original base still shows. That's why it was just a simple little rock and gravel base. Because, well, companies like Green Stuff World and others make lots of nifty things to put on there like this. And it's just, it's that, it's that easy. It doesn't have to be that hard, but much appreciated. So again, Green Stuff World in the house, who make so many of the nifty, wonderful things that I use so often. I love the, well, obviously the texture rollers are a big favorite of mine, but the Crunch Times texture sheets, I would definitely suggest you look at those because gosh I think almost all of my several of my army painting series have used all or most of the crunch time sheets actually oh my new lizard man series here let me let me see if I can grab this real quick here while I'm thinking about it and hopefully not dump these on the floor 
So this is the latest army painting series, but you can see the Aztec theme roller with some of the skulls, but also sculpted some some vines on there. And then here's some of the statue pieces. So again, mostly again green stuff world basing stuff, but a little, little green stuff added. Ironically, yes, I know. <laughs> So yeah, lots of different fun things you can use. There's pretty much more tools available than there are things you can imagine just quickly. You have to sort of, like me, be insane and keep doing lots and lots of projects to keep coming up with new ideas or new ways to push all those products. Just getting some more of the yellow back in there. Now the sword blade here, I gotta get some kind of lighter color back in this area right in here. That suddenly just got too dark, devoid of color. I gotta put something in there. And that should do It's also going to help set off some of that gold, maybe. Speaking of which, we are going to smooth out. Now, the, of course, once the foliage is in the way, it's going to be a little harder to see or reach. That's why normally it is the very last thing that I do. But I just thought it could be helpful to see that play out. Yeah, let's keep going with our, and this is more of a sky blue as opposed to the teal blue. Just uh, working in a little more separation. Yeah, that was all a bunch of light up in there, and it, as I kept looking at it, I said, no, that should maybe be more of a middle tone. Aha, okay, reflection time again. Some of the blue. Because if it's gold, it should be reflecting this. Oh, and another one here. And here. Let's lighten that up a touch. There. Speaking of which, try a few more lights in here. Again, what, what I've learned is if you're going to use a wet palette, they can't be super wet. Uh, basically what I did was I, I put out a brand new palette here for tonight because the other ones have been, they've been used during the day and, well, there was a little too much action on those. And sometimes the brand new wet palettes have an awful lot of water on them. And that's where we found out that if you're going to use the the green stuff world paints are probably better off actually just leaving them be a little bit drier. You're also going to have, what would you say, a satin type of finish on there. It's not going to be super matte. It's just something to be aware of. It's neither here nor there. But if you're expecting one, you know, I'm expecting that to be super matte. Well, it's not going to be. Now the candy inks, you're looking if you're looking for some glossy finish there, that's kind of what those are made for. That was that was definitely the first time I'd ever used the candy inks. I would be curious to see what happens when those go through an airbrush actually. That may be the next time I play with those. Is just screwing around through the airbrush, see what happens. I mean, it's it's not going to hurt anything. They're not. They're pretty. They're sort. Of, they're thin enough that they'll they'll go through the airbrush. Now I'm looking to do a little pinkish magenta again in my sword blade here. 
I'm looking targeting in this zone right here. There we go. Maybe a touchdown there. Let's get some some of this more pinkish color into the wrist area here if we can. So taking my lighter skin tone here and now poof there on the, the wrist. That's kind of important because you got a lot of blood vessels right there in that area. All right, and here I need to, yeah, we're going to pull this off of the main palette out to here. See if I can't soften up this line. And what did we learn? We learned to do that drier. Do not, you know, I mean, a little bit of water maybe to help a bit of flow because it's been sitting on the palette for a while. But other than that, yeah, don't mess around too much with lots of water in that. Now, if you're doing glazes, a whole different story. Entirely different story. There, so now we don't have that. I just wanted to break that connection line there in the right around the mouth. Now, more reflected light on the jawline here. Like there. need to get some of this now here almost thinking more like a glaze so that's okay but now I'm gonna grab some of the pink we got some of the ivory color and I just no water no water whatsoever just go straight up here And I'm, I'm looking to do a basically a line of highlights here. It's almost like what we do when we're doing, say, a piece of armor that's maybe going around somebody's arm or, or leg or, so, or their chest. See, when I went back over this with some of the other glazes, we sort of wiped out these lighter colors. But again, no, they just have to be devoid of water. That is just... That's a really different way of having to think about it. Just in the same way that contrast paints, I'm still learning the language of contrast paints. Uh, I'm learning that the language of these on the fly. I mean, it's, it's, it's like I don't even have my translation dictionary with me and somebody's yelling at me desperately trying to get me to, like I don't know, not run somebody over. And I'm just kind of tooling along like so. Something in here. Something in there. Got to do. No, I'm not going to do the sky blue. I'm going to take the turquoise here. We'll take some of that ivory. Or see how light we can make that. Because I want to see what happens now that we've learned not to have the water in there. Com that's just a completely different result. I, It's really interesting. Did not expect that. Now it sort of makes sense because I think I might have accidentally messed around with one or two of these. I think it was like some camo greens or something. It was in another. It was oh, it was on one of the those chibi style figures. But it was it was mixed with other paints, and it was also kind of on the drier side. So now I know why I didn't run into what I did before earlier in the probably at about the one hour ish mark or so, maybe hour and a half. That was when that realization was made. Now, 
what will I do here? I'm going to take some of the sky blue then, mix it with some of that green. See if we can't go back here onto our sleeve. Typical thing that I like to do is, is sort of work back and forth a little bit. Darken something down, lighten it, and then do a some kind of a tint over the top. It's not necessarily just about making things darker. It's also about tinting them. And I'm even putting a little bit of that color into the hair. Can you see that it's blocked by the sword, unfortunately? I, I just have to turn it this way. Sorry, but I need that little bit of dark there. And then we can sort of modify it a touch. Can you? Ah, that's unfortunate. The sword just kind of blocks that. Now, can I, I need to have a couple of little brush strokes worth of lighter color. But again, I my instinct took over and I put some water in there, and it's it's just not doing anything. So I've got to get away from that water and just let the paint do its thing. So I'm here. That's better. Do I want to get more... Just considering putting a little bit of more blue into the that magenta thing there, but we're just going to leave that go. I'll let that I'll let that be. I'll take some of this darker gray mix here and then get some on the the handle here. The necklace boy tempted to try and get a little more dark and separation on that. Yeah, it was worth it. You know what? Maybe even some of that gray onto this. But maybe less less watery, more opaque. So I'm just taking some of my skin color here and literally turning that into a gray. So some of this is going to be a little less warm now. there and even on my piece of parchment here speaking of parched I'm gonna get me just something to drink real quick here and it's already be drinking that right into the microphone but I did not have a hand available to move the mic so apologies there Who knows, maybe I get myself, instead of the headset, I use a unidirectional mic or something like that in the future. Let's get more of my lighter color here. But I just, it's weird to essentially kind of step away from the water that I'm used to using to make stuff flow. This is, a, it's different. Every paint's different. We've been finding out the differences here now. Can you see in the wrist here how it yeah, that little bit of green that worked its way in that's I was really happy that we were able to do that. I needed a little better transition there. Let's see. Still gonna Boy, that magenta, when I went back over the top with just this. Oh, look, we have some plants sitting in our magenta there. I think you can see this. It's a, I know the plant is kind of now in the, in the way just a bit. Now, some of this you can't 
see it's really more just sort of cleaning some things up, getting some colors down in there. Oh, what the heck, I'm going to get a little bit of this magenta into there too, into those folds, into the hair. That color goes somewhere, must go everywhere. Book of Wobble, Chapter 1, check it out. It's there. Some purple now. into these folds. I said, am I looking for a complete transparent look? Nah, not really. Not really. But it does, it makes it, you want it to stand out from the purple, but then not too much. Speaking of that same purple, we're gonna, on that collar, yeah, it needed something right there. Now let's let's try a quick little see as when you're using as a straight up glaze water is fine but when you just want to paint with it you're just better off letting it be just essentially from palette to brush to figure not interceding with adding a bunch of water to it now who knows maybe mediums are okay I'm just thinking the paint is designed to be used a little thinner. Or it is thin already. Now I could even paint the foliage if I wanted to. You know, if I felt like it wasn't quite the right color or I could you know, do some glazes over this or whatever. You know, some of my, my tall foliage again also from Green Stuff World. looking for this is the I keep wanting to call it amethyst but it's not amethyst it's the abyss blue yeah now we got some separation there too that's good just gonna reinforce yeah okay now we're getting some nice standout details in the face Always a good thing. Let's see if we can. Now, the tassels here. Uh, I know you can't really see much of those. But, yeah, now that I've, again, gotten a little more att attuned to how this paint's going to work. I mean, just a short while ago, I just I wasn't able to do that paint was acting just not quite the way I expected it it would but we've sort of gotten that handle on it now yeah we definitely have something nice going with that let's see what we can do here now on that sleeve we don't want this big old blobs of lighter color less with the blobs and more with the shading yeah I need a little touch of reflected light there that's a good deal there I might just, just try and sneak in some more of the turquoise into my magenta. It's like the Reese's peanut butter cup thing. It's like you've got chunk in my peanut butter. Well, we just got turquoise into the magenta. After trying to get magenta into the turquoise. So I've got, uh, for as small as this is and, and relatively simple as the shapes are, We've been able to sneak in a lot of different colors, some reflections on skin tone. We've managed to work in some 
freehand over here. That's pretty much how that's how a lot of the videos work. Because people will say, well, do you have a video for this or a video for that? And I'll say, well, the, you just kind of watch any video. It's all in there. It really is. Now I'm going to add me some green down here. Oh, yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah, it reflects that, but also, like I said, there was too much orange, too much like this. Same thing. I'm going to try and get this green that's over here. And in this corner of the hilt, not much, just some. And here, too. Green versus red. I know it's a weird, you don't think of the skin as the red, but the skin is reddish, but now we also have that green next to it. Now we're going to hit that green with some white, well, ivory, I should say. And there we go. The same over here. Now we got the sky blue on that side. What do we got over here? Is that just gray? What is that? I don't know. I don't know. But what we might do, and speaking of new new colors here, I think there's a white here. Yeah, it's called, I'm just giving it a shake. So you want to give it a good shake. And as always, it's a new thing. We have to poke a little hole in this here not put a hole in my hand because that would be unfortunate there we go just uh get some white out here it's mostly for the sword blade to get that extra little sparkly highlight but what we've learned do not thin that down with water we're just going to go straight up with the white see how that covers we saw how the yellow covers that's like it can I mean it's that's pretty actually it's a stronger white than I expected it to be and that oh yeah that's nice I needed that there I also need it a little bit there see that little line that we put on the top of that if you're going to use white, if you really, really got to, re just try and save it for the very end. After you've worked all the other areas, use it as a finishing material and not as a building block. Boy, that's another t-shirt worthy phrase that I may not remember. How about some of that right there? Oh yeah, now we've got the separation from the arm. There's just there was no separation before. We've certainly got it now. Speaking of some separation, let's I'm just looking for the knuckles here. A couple of lighter spots. Hmm. Hand here need some shape I know you can't necessarily see that but that does make a difference maybe maybe gonna play around right here forward see if I can get a little bit of a highlight there and on the end of the nose necklace maybe I'll Give it a little touch of something there to bring that out, which is good. All right, now we're getting some, a little bit of, yeah, it, it's just get one extra level of dimension to it. It there was there was light and dark, but we needed one level of oomph. Didn't want to keep going darker with the shadows there, just because of the nature of the area. Which means I'm going to just throw a few of these light highlights there. So yeah, that's that's nice. 
And just a couple of more shots right here. As we sort of conclude this, there. Now I think we've we've covered several bases on this thing, quite literally. <laughs> we've done an awful lot in just a few hours. Well, I think more like three hours-ish. Two hours, 35 minutes. That is not too shabby. Figuring out a whole brand new paint line. Painting up our Dark Sword figure here. All in two hours, 35 minutes. Now, I've, I keep forgetting to mention this the last couple of videos. You, know, you want to do the subscribe thing. You always want to make sure to hit the, was that the notification or the bell for all notifications? Because it's something I still keep forgetting to do. And I'll say, wait a minute, why am I, why did I find out about this video weeks later, or months later, or whatever? You have to do that all notifications thing. Found that out the hard way myself. And, you know, if you can drop a like on this thing, that's always good. YouTube enjoys that, that engagement or whatever they call it. And if you want to do the Patreon thing, like I said, Dark Sword Videos, is that's the $10 pledge, right? Yeah, that's the $10 level, and... You get to see all the fun stuff like this. Yeah. Really enjoyed this. So, Also, thanks to Dark Sword Miniatures. I mean, we've been talking about Green Stuff World a lot, but let's also just say thanks to Dark Sword for making so many really cool figures. Pretty much anything you could imagine character-wise for D&D &D or any role-playing game. Foliage, freehand, faces, we non-metallic metal. We sort of did it all on this one. So thanks to first and last, well, Green Stuff World, A. Josh, and Fruity Toots, and Michael. And uh, we know we had a Gary in here, and a first last. And Albert, also, and of course, Trevor. Always great to see Trevor. That first lab, I'm just looking through as we spin this around here for you to see some of the different things. Oh, and Peter. Don't want to forget Peter and Will and James and Tyler all in there early on. And Paul. Well, thanks again, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one. What's this? Thursday. Try and catch you maybe Saturday in another live session. Might be another Dark Sword figure. Who knows? But thanks again, everybody. I'll catch you on the next one.